to the connecting point. I am Dr. Marcy, your facilitator for this discussion today. This is the place where creators connect to inspire, share their ideas and stories, to transform the world through raw and unedited talk. Now, audience, I am here today with three gentlemen, and I, I call them, I'm gonna call them power gentlemen because they're doing something that is significant in the community of which we will talk about in a little bit. Welcome to the connecting part. We have Quentin Williams here. We have uh, Mr. Charles Moore. We have Mr. Kenneth Roche. Welcome to Thank the you. So how glad to be here. How y'all feel today? We, 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 we okay. Okay, the, the sun is shining. You better than okay, the sun is shining. Okay, <laughs> now, uh, gentlemen, I must tell the connecting point, thus the name of this platform. Well, audience, for me, the connecting point would be Mr. Quentin Williams. Raise your hand, Quentin. Hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Quentin Williams and I went to the dear old Morris Brown. Morris Brown. College wow. together. Um, and I was a music major and Quentin, it was heavily involved in music. Um, yes, ma'am. Yeah, heavily involved in music. So that's the connecting point. He, of course, connected these other two gentlemen of which you're going to find out more about today as well. Uh, now, audience, not audience, Lord have mercy, gentlemen. Can you uh, tell the audience a little bit about where you're from and where you are now? Well, I guess I'll start with me. Um, I'm originally from Douglas, Georgia. That's Coffee County. That's down in South Georgia. And I've been up here in Atlanta since 86. Mm -hmm. After high school, I moved to Atlanta and I've been here ever since. I'm currently um, employed with Cobb County Sheriff's Office. I have 25 years of service. Looking forward to retiring um, the end of this year. Mm -hmm. That retirement looks good now, doesn't it, Quentin? Really? Good. <laughs> I'm <laughs> almost there with you, Quentin. Okay, Mr. Moore. So I, I would like to say that I went to Morris Brown uh, as well. Oh, well, um, okay. No, I didn't. No, I didn't attend. I just, no, no, no. I just went. I, I went. Had to visit something else for something. I didn't, I didn't attend. I just went. You just uh, did, but that's okay. We accept you as family. <laughs> I'll just there for a few minutes. But anyway, um, so I'm Charles Moore. I'm <laughs> from Douglas as well, Coffee County. Of course, Quentin and I and Kenneth are our first, second cousins. Like, well, I guess we're second. They may be, they may be first, but mm -hmm. um, so there's a, a definitely a, a deep family connection there. Um, I live here in Atlanta as well. Uh, Next one will be eight years. Uh, prior to that, I uh, lived in Arkansas and worked for Walmart Corporate for 23 years. And I'm currently <clears throat> HR Director for a uh, for SAI LTL Motor Freight here in Atlanta. And I'm working on retirement. I'm older than, than Quentin, so I, I should be retiring before him, but I'm going to give it another probably three or four years okay. uh, because I love what I do and, uh, and the money is good. So uh, <laughs> it's important, as long as you have a zeal, that's still there. I, I, I agree with you. Stay in it. Stay in it. Yeah, definitely. So good to be here. Thank you. Welcome again. Yes. Okay, Mr. Roche. Hi. So I'm I'm Kenny Roche, and as Charles said a minute ago, we're all closely related. Uh, Quentin and I are first cousins. Our mothers are sisters, and. Uh, Charles and I, our grandfathers were brothers. Wow. So uh, I have known these guys my entire life. I was born in Douglas as well, even though when I was very young, we moved to Savannah, mm -hmm. where I live right now. I was in Atlanta for some years, and we moved back here to start a church, um, Branded Hearts. So I pastor, I'm the lead pastor at Branded Hearts Church here in Savannah. And wow. uh, so along, I went to um, Savannah State right down the street, HBCU graduate, yeah. and so um, yeah, so that's what I do. I pastor here. I'm also uh, a chaplain with the Savannah Police Department and uh, very active in our community and in our city. And uh, of course, the church keeps us going all the time. So anyway, that's pretty much who I am. I'm a husband and a father. So uh, I'm glad to be here with you today. 
Well, listen, we are here today to talk, to talk about something that is vital. Um, and that is, I'm going to start with just the word. And I would like each of you to tell me what this word means to you. And the word is community. Well, before we even talk about what we're going to talk about, <laughs> what does that word mean to you, community? Well, to me, um, community is family. Mm -hmm. If I had to sum it up in one word, is family. Um, where where uh, we're from, we are pretty close close niche uh, community. Um, we have family all throughout the city. Uh, almost every other block is family. Mm -hmm. And so we grew up together, um, played sports together, we worshiped together, and um, that's all I've known my whole life. And so let me say this, ask this, well, do you feel like community is a lifeline? Oh yes, definitely. <laughs> okay. Anyone yeah. else can chime in on the word community? Well, I'll jump in right quick. For, for me, community is community is about the people. It's uh, it's the the differences that people bring. I know uh, people. A lot of times, there's so much division in the world and community. A lot of people look for community. They look for a place to belong. They look for a place to be safe. They look for people who may be different, but we're determined to make it together. And so, it's that willingness to come together. Uh, to put aside our differences, community may not, it may be race, but it may not have anything to do about race. It may have so many factors, but then it may not, but it's the coming together of people for a common good, for a common goal. And so I think in order for us to be successful, we all need to have community to some degree in order to be successful in our lives. And yeah. so I strongly believe in community. I'm glad to be a part of a community. And um, I believe I get some of my strength and my encouragement from what I call my community. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mr. Moore. Oh man, so community for me is, um, it brings me back to back in the eighties uh, when I started the Douglas Mass Choir, community choir. Mm -hmm. And what made the choir unique was we had people from Baptist, Holiness, Pentecostal, mm -hmm. Methodist. Uh, I, we had some, a couple of different races in there. And so it was all about, like Kenny just said, bringing people together mm -hmm. uh, to represent everybody that, that lives in that, in that community. Uh, I served as a city councilman for 10 years uh, in that community as well. And I had to represent people uh, from different backgrounds. So diversity uh, is really what it's all about. Mm -hmm. But bringing all of that diversity together to reach one common goal. You know, um, I have to say this, gentlemen, because I, uh, God speaks to me in, in a unique way, and it's usually connecting things. That's one, one reason this platform is called The Connecting Point. And so um, I reached out to Quentin. How many, that been about two weeks ago, right, Quentin? Right at two weeks, yes. Um, when I saw that, he was promoting something that had a lot to do with community. Quentin did not know at the time God had been speaking to me heavily about uniting and connecting and networking. Uh, so much so that my unit that I'm teaching in school right now is called Creators Network of where I'm trying to teach the children, if we work together for one goal, we can get it done faster and efficiently. So when I saw what you all were doing, I knew immediately, I said, that's right in line with what God has already been telling me. Now I'll go into a little more later, but I wanted you to specify what that meant to you because community, and let's just say for the African-American culture, let's start there. Um, community is something that has been a lifeline through history. Had we not had community, 
where would we be as a people? Hmm. And so I even see you all here um, as an extension of that community and you're gonna be reaching to try to pull more of uh, the community together. Now, um, you all have started working on a great endeavor. What is that? Anybody can start talking. Well, let's all start again. <laughs> Well, it's something. Um, it's something that I've um, um, envisioned for years and years, years. I, I love, and ever since I've been at Morris Brown, periodically I would go back home and um, do something for the community, um, whether it's a concert, a workshop, or seminar, something pertaining to music. Mm -hmm. I figured that was one area that, um, by coming to Atlanta, being exposed to a, a lot of different. Um, styles of music and um, stuff like that. So some of the things that I uh, learned and, and gathered after being up here for a little while, I want to take back and share. Not that I was any better than anybody else, but you know, when you grow up um, in not a big city, mm -hmm. a lot of musicians play the same way, a lot of singers sing the same way. And so just bringing some different um, styles of music, some acapella stuff, some choral stuff, mm -hmm. you know, traditional gospel, contemporary, just so just things that I learned over the years, especially at Morris Brown. I just wanted to take back and just give back to the community. So periodically I would reach out to a local church and tell them what I was trying to do and um never was a money maker for me, just something to give back. Mm -hmm. And so I've been doing this on and off since since 86. And you know, I want to mention to the audience that Quentin here, uh he was in the choir with me uh at Morris Brown, but he was also a part of this group. When I tell you, I wish I had a recording of it to play. Um, he was in a group of men called Peace. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And if you, uh, I can equate them to uh, the style of Take Six. If you ever heard of Take Six. And let me see, who could I equate them to today? I don't even know. I don't even know a group today. Do you all know a group that is similar to Tate? I don't even know one today. Let's say it. No. Uh -huh. That says a lot, Quentin. <laughs> but uh, they had such a tight, harmonious sound. And we got a chance to experience that at Morris Brown. So Quentin had the was it baritone? You were baritone. Yes. Thanks, baritone. Yeah. And so he had that bottom range. Oh, y'all, let me tell you something. <laughs> it was something to hear. It was something to hear. And so when I saw that you all were doing this, I said, oh, that's wonderful. Plus, I got to throw a little plug in here, gentlemen. That's HBCU style to give <laughs> That's you nice. know that if you if you've experienced HBCU in any form, yeah. our style is to give back what we have learned. So I commend you, gentlemen, for doing that, even though we hadn't told them what it is yet, and you don't have to. So, any uh, uh, gentlemen, can you chime me into what Quentin's saying about what where this endeavor started, what sparked it? Um, how you feel about doing it? Well, of course, Quentin is a visionary here. He, he's the one that came uh -huh. up with the vision. Um, we're there to support it. Um, and the good thing about this group, um, uh, besides being family, we really are, is that uh, you can come together and support something that someone else is doing. And it didn't have to be your idea that you can help support whatever it is to help carry someone else's vision out. Mm -hmm. And I believe that when you help someone else to accomplish what it is that they want to, then God is obligated to uh, send people to help you accomplish what it is that you want to do. So absolutely, it's, absolutely. His. it's not about being out front. It's not about, you know, trying to have your name on it, all that kind of stuff. It's not about the money. Um, 
it's about helping somebody else. Uh, and besides, all of us love music anyway, so mm -hmm. that, that kind of helped. Now, if he was going to say, let's go down there and build houses and help Habitat for Humanity or something, then, you know, I probably had to take a different approach and say, I'll send you some money, but I ain't building no house. But, uh, <laughs> so. Okay, Mr. Roche, what you yeah, got to tie me with? Yeah, I just want to say um, for what Quentin has started years ago, I actually wound up attending last year. I wasn't um, a part of facil facilitating, but I heard about it. I wanted to go and just sing background in the choir because, um, well, first of all, I want to say when you mentioned community, I just thought about um, the word that came to my mind was collaboration. Yeah. And it's so important to uh, understand the power of collaboration, especially when it comes to what he's doing in terms of a community choir. And as Charles alluded to a while ago, it, it's not about uh, the, de the denomination of the church or anything like that. Over, I've been in church my whole life. So I saw all these things like denominations and all these things be dividers that keep us apart. Right. We don't do that the same or we don't do that the same, but to think that we could come together in music and lay all that stuff aside. Mm -hmm. And come together. So no matter what we do, it's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be an acapella song, or we're gonna do uh, some choral music. But in the end, it's to God be the glory, and then mm -hmm. it's for God to be the glory, and then for us to uh, show church people, to show people what it's like that you can have something powerful when you come together. Yeah. I, I read, a, I read a, a saying some years ago that talked about the collective wisdom of us all together. Mm -hmm. Our collective wisdom is greater than the smartest one person among us at all if we bring our collective wisdom together. And so the, the collective, all of us have been in music our whole life, um, our whole family back to our grandparents, there's nothing but music, but to be able to come together. And um, I, like Charles said, I, I love gospel. I love music anyway. So when you mention it, I'm, I'm in it and it's not about my, my name being called or anything. Um, you know, when he, when Q wanted to do this and I said, well, yeah, I'm definitely, I'm, I'm behind hundred percent and I enjoyed so much. Um, and so to actually be a part of that and to be presenting, I'm, I'm super excited about it. I haven't, I love directing and I love teaching songs, all this stuff like that. So, um, I don't get a chance to do that a whole lot. And, um, the final thing I wanted to say is a lot of times when there are people close to us, we tend to overlook the greatness in the ones closest to us yeah. and see greatness in somebody from New York, mm -hmm. but I look over the greatness that's right in my two cousins in front of me. And mm -hmm. so that we can come together and recognize, okay, I'm, I'm here with two great guys and all of us coming together can do great things. I mm -hmm. think it's just important. And it just, uh, it, it, it leaves a message and, and it's, a, um, it, it, I think it impacts us beyond just one event that people can see, okay, if they did that, then we can do that together. We can do this together. We can come together and on one accord and be okay with it. Absolutely. Now, let me ask you this, Quentin. I know you said that you love music, you want to give back, but what caused the thought to you know, expect you've been wanting to do it. What pushed you or inspired you to just go ahead and put this thing together here? I think it was the timing. Um, I mean, years and years of vision doing this, and um, different things would come up, whether it's job, um, finance, shallow, whatever it was, it was something always deterred me from going through. And so right before COVID, we had actually started planning to do um, concert and had picked the date, um, a location, and then COVID came and just kind of shut everything down. So when things started to open back up, I said, man, this would be a good time because we shut down. We shut down. Yeah. And um, I say music is something that it's a universal language that everyone relates to, both personal and communal. Mm -hmm. I thought that would be a good thing to come back to bring us all together to fellowship and work. Well, I guess the audience has figured out what the thing is now. It is a community what? Choir. I mean, yeah. just beautiful. And, and you know, uh, something I, I saw you post 
on social media, I think it was last week, about inviting anybody to come to rehearsals. Yes. That's beautiful. You don't have to be a part of the Baptist, like like um, Pastor Roche was saying. You don't have to be in any denomination. If you're somebody that's just passing by, say, oh, I, I love singing. That's it. That's Can it. I, yes, I, I thought that was just such a beautiful thing to have people just come and I'll learn say music. Right, the choir, the concert choir is open to anyone who wants to sing or make a joyful noise. <laughs> that see, and so this this is called. Can you tell the audience? Well, I don't want to give it. You all tell the audience what is this called? This initiative called? Oh, the Sound of Unity Citywide Community Concert. The Sound of Unity. Yes. What? Okay. What does Unity sound like? <laughs> it sounds it sounds like a group of people that come together to give Ooh. God praise because God's been good to us. God has brought us through some things. He's brought us out. He's even brought us through a pandemic. Yeah. And the whiner said years ago, millions didn't make, didn't make it, it. But I was but one of the one ones. Who, ones who yeah. did. So since I'm here, I'm going to give God the praise tonight. So when we come together in unity, it's about making a joyful noise unto the Lord. Yes. It's a sound. Mm. <laughs> it's a sound. Wow. Don't get me started. I felt let, it. Let me either. I'm trying to look. I'm trying to see. <laughs> I felt it just now. That, that, listen here. A sound is something else. When a sound goes forth in the earth, mm, it mm. resonates. You know, you asked the question, what does unity look like? What's the song? Um, uh, I know Kirk produced it, I think, but if you ever wonder what heaven looks like, Looks like you you know that song. Uh, you yeah. said Kurt Franklin. Kirk is part of it, but uh, what's the guy name? Uh, last name Moore. Um, I'm trying to think of. Say it, say it. No, if you ever wonder what that might look like, oh, I, I can't know what you're talking about. I cannot call the. Yeah, I thought that was on. He did with the uh, with his mass choir with the Arkansas mass. No, no, no. It's the song I be. Uh, <laughs> The, the, the guy more uh what's the big choir now Dorinda was a part of it doing the bike uh I'm trying, is oh, it wow. the J, G, GW uh it's in Atlanta and there's all these black white people come together and they, they did this movement with Kirk um, Maverick Maverick Maverick, Maverick. Uh, yeah Maverick. and this is a song the guy if you ever wonder what heaven looks like it looked like you and me mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. you say what does unity look like and you need to look like us it, this is what unity looks like. Mm. You know, um, I was thinking, you know, I was telling you about teaching about this. And recently I I used an example. I said, now I'm going to give, I told the fifth grade class, I'm going to give you one song. Now this song would normally take you about 30 minutes to learn it. If you learn it by yourself. But we're going to network we're going to collaborate and see how quick you can play it they played it in seven minutes <laughs> mm. and they took each measure and they perfected each each student perfected their measure and when they played it it sounded like one person played the song so what does unity sound like it sounds like one voice one vision, one voice. One, and it's powerful. If I if, and if I were to play the song they played, you would not know it was eight people hmm. that had shared in putting that one piece together. And so that's what this choir is going to do. It's going to be many voices, but the sound that's going to go out. I know will resonate in the land. It will be an extension of God's glory. Yes, yes. So I, I mean, I think it is just, it's awesome. I wish I was in. <laughs> <laughs> Quinty, you're going to have to bring that to the ATL. Yeah, sounds good. I'll help you too. I sure will.
I'll be in the background, but I help you. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm serious because I remember growing up. Um, I might have been in middle school, high school, and there was this uh, choir that they would do with all the teenagers from all the different churches. And I still remember those songs now that we perform. And, and it meant so much. It was such a powerful thing. And as a teenager, I didn't know how powerful. I just knew it felt good. Mm -hmm. And so um, this here is something. I know God's breath is on it. Yes. I yes. know his breath is on it. Now, where do you want to go in the future with this? <laughs> well, um, you know, my, my vision is a hundred voice choir. I, I just think um, the more people involved, the bigger the sound will be, um, the more the community will come together. Of course, mm -hmm. the more people we have, the more we come in together. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, I just see it busting the seams at the church. So we have to go to a larger facility, you know, to have this concert and it's all in the giving back and fellowshipping. Now, are they reading the music or this is more of a rote style rehearsal for the people who might want to come? Or do they have to look at the sheet music? Do they have to, what What does that entail? Me, Charles and Kenny, we're, uh, we're teaching the material. So we we have um, copies of the lyrics, you know, just in case they're not familiar with the song. But we're teaching all all the all the parts, all the voice parts. Okay, y'all hear that now? <laughs> you do not have to be, you do not have to be a music reader. Exactly. Um, but you have to know how to follow. That's all. Listen and follow. Listen and follow. That's it. So um, let's talk a little bit about how this concert you've done one before right yes we did one last year with our first one okay after the first experience how did you feel oh my god um oh god. i was i was overjoyed i was i was just on a high for it a while um the fact that we were able to pull it off and it was just such a harmonious spirit at the church and in the choir members, um, they just were so excited because, you know, we've, a lot of newer ministries have gotten away from choir. A lot of churches have gotten away yeah. from choir. Yeah. Um, so this was a chance for um, people who grew up singing in the church choir to come back together and do something that we all love doing. I mean, back in the day, you know, you didn't have to audition for the choir. No, you didn't. You just had to be an active member of the church. And um, you just come and find your part. And, you know, mm -hmm. uh, now it's got so um, technical and yeah, you don't, you know, you have to audition and you exclude a lot of people that just have a heart for singing. Yes. And and not so much of, of a professional, you know. Mm -hmm. And so those um, people that grew up singing in churches now um, either have to find something else to do in the church or they just come and, and sit. Mm-hmm. Praise teams, so, and nothing's wrong with praise teams, but yeah, for praise team, you have to, you know, you got to audition. Yeah. You know, right. You're in the mic by yourself. You got to carry your part. You got to do all this kind of stuff. But like, couldn't say the choir, uh, you know, by kids they in and everybody could be in the choir. Mm -hmm. now, that don't, that Even don't if be, you couldn't sing, you could be in the choir. <laughs> you could be in the choir. We'll put you in the back row, you know, away from the microphones, but you was a part. Uh, right. You know, so, so was, you, you was a part of something. That's right. That's right. Well, gentlemen, I'm I'm going to say this one point. We've talked about community. We've talked about unity. What other word can you think of that describes what these people are going to experience who are coming as listeners or coming to take part in the choir? I think it's just, I think for me, I think it's just going to be, if we want it to be, or for me, is to be an experience. Mm -hmm. uh, to experience a move of God, to experience something that 
Um, it's not about a feeling, but to really, um, I don't, I don't know these guys here. Nobody's there for show uh, and a performance. Um, although you rehearse and you know to be, you know, to perfect your gifts or whatever, but mm -hmm. I think it's about having an experience that make people say, "When are we doing this again? I want to do it again. Mm -hmm. Can we do it again? I can't wait." Mm -hmm. uh, so. I think we want them to experience or have an experience. Okay. Definitely. And I, I wanted to say um, we, we'll experience the love of God. Uh, I Last year, at the first one, I went to the rehearsal the night before, mm -hmm. and then I was at the concert and I sang. And so for me, I love to have such a good time in rehearsal. There's, there's uh, We're learning the songs. But there's such a good time. There's there's laughter. There's healing and everything. And and so you know, God says, "I dwell in the praises of my people." And so yeah. we're giving a place to dwell. And in that dwelling place, when a person comes and they've been depressed, then my prayer is that depression will have to leave them because in that in those songs that um, the the presence of God will be so strong that depression can't stay on there. Mm -hmm. And there was something that I wasn't sure Quentin was going to mention, but there was a lady that we knew uh, many years in Douglas, and we did not know that that concert, for me personally, was the last time I was going to see her because she actually went home to be with the Lord at some mm -hmm. point after that. But the thing that blessed me was I still have a picture on my phone. Um, we took a selfie that night in rehearsal, uh -huh. and we were talking and talking. And so my thing is... Um, I I was saddened when I heard she went home to be with the Lord, but I was glad to know that when we rehearsal that night, we laughed, we talked, we hadn't seen a long time. She, she used to do my mother's hair back in the day. And so oh, we had seen each other in a long time. So it was that love and that fellowship that that is the memory that I'll carry with me. So during that weekend, it'll be the love, it'll be the fellowship, it'll be the laughter, it'll be the good time. And um, And people will walk away with, wow, I can't wait till next year. That's why I was excited when, when Quentin mentioned doing this this year, I immediately remembered the feeling from last year. And um, it was like, wow, that was good. Let's do that again. So, and who is that? that? Maya Angelou said, people won't remember what you said. They will mm -hmm. remember how you made them feel. Right. Quentin, what, mm -hmm. what can you say they will experience? You know, Marcy, for me, um, my desire is that you know, musicians, you find dynamic musicians, you find dynamic singers. We can all sound good, but at the end of the concert, when someone comes up and say, Quentin, I needed that, that blessed me. You know, that's what means the world. To, I, we can give them something to take and encourage them to keep pressing on, mm -hmm. keep moving. You know, um, you know, the same thing when I was um, playing at church and um, um, uh, people come up at the service and say, oh my God, y'all were jamming today. You know that, I mean, anybody can jam, mm -hmm. you know, but when they say, oh, I needed that today, that really blessed me. That's <laughs> when you know that God is in the And there's nothing wrong with sounding good. You please understand. No. Yeah. But I want more than just a feeling, you know, because um, when you walk out the door, that feeling could be gone. It could be gone right after the song ends. Mm -hmm. We want to impart something that's going to uh, minister to them and, and give them some some strength, some encouragement to, to keep pressing on. Like Mr. Moore said, you want an experience. Want an experience, yes. So, you know, I'm thinking of something here and I'm, I'm going to share it with you while you all think of a point to ponder to lead because you can't come on the connecting point and you don't lead the audience with a point to ponder. Uh, so I'm going to give you time to think as I, as I um, share this with you. You know, recently here, I, I turned 53 and I decided to do a photo shoot. Mm -hmm. And um, I was inspired by another person. And I wore this African garment that I had for years. Never really paid attention to the words on the outfit. The mm -hmm. outfit had words on the sleeves on the back on the skirt and my daughter said mama you need to find out what that means before you wear it 
And mm. I, you're absolutely right. And the words were written on a scroll and this was authentic African garment. So I looked up the meaning and I don't even know how to pronounce it. Don't ask me to pronounce it. But I looked up the meaning of the words and the words meant one tree alone cannot stand the wind. Mm. It's an African proverb that means in unity, there is strength. So Quentin, when I say God talks to me through connections, he also mentioned that to me about this. <clears throat> One tree. One tree. Alone cannot stand the wind. Quentin alone couldn't do this. You three guys alone couldn't do it. But in unity, there is strength. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I want to leave that before you left a point to ponder. <laughs> it was so good. I love it. I love it. Yes. If that one go first. Okay, I'll go since Quentin that our vision more has been going. But the first thing that came to my mind when you said that, I thought about something that um, an old song that we used to hear in the Baptist church and my mom used to sing it and she used to say it all the time. And they would always say, let it be real. And I didn't get it at that time. Um, let it be real. And then they said, everything you do for Jesus, Maybe. let it be real. And so whatever it is that you're doing for the Lord, whether it's in song, whether it's in some form of ministry, whether it's standing on the street corner, don't get a platform for yourself. But whatever it is that you're doing, let it be real. In other words, make Jesus the center of whatever it is that you're doing. Mm -hmm. Just let it be real. Don't don't play with it. Don't don't uh, prostitute it for your benefits or anything like that. But Whatever it is, just let it be real. Let it mm. be real. I like that. Are you letting it be real, people? Mm. No, that's the truth. So I wanted to ask you, would you would you tell me your proverb once more? Be because your question is to speak to your proverb. Is that right? Uh-huh. Well, no, no, no. You, you don't have to speak to my proverb. You are giving a point to ponder. What would you like to eat, leave the audience okay. speaking on? Okay. So uh, I, I will go next. Um, so at this time, as, as it relates to unity that we've talked about and community and collaboration from the beginning, I thought about this. Um, and so I just wanted to go this little Bible story very quickly when these people had been with Jesus for three days and they had nothing to eat. And so the disciples said, send them home, let them figure it out. Mm -hmm. But then uh, he said, no, you, you feed them. And so they said, well, it'll cost too much. How can we do that? And the whole time Jesus knew how this thing was going to work out. So then one of them said, well, there's this little boy that's got two fish and five loaves. So they brought him over to Jesus. Jesus uh, gave thanks for that. And then they fed 5,000 people, not counting the women and children. Some theologians said it could have been up to eight or 10,000 people. And then when it was over, they had 12 baskets left over. There was a basket for each one of the 12 disciples that knew that if I came together on this right here, I too will take something home out of what people thought was nothing. So the point that I would like for, for people to ponder is that don't belittle your gift. Don't think that what you have is nothing. Don't think it's not worth it because what you have, what we have to offer, it may be little in someone else's eyes, but God can take that and magnify it. We said early, uh, multiply, yes. So, um, you know, a person may not be the greatest singer in the world, but your voice is a voice that will bless somebody. And it may not be musical. It may be some other gift or talent that you have. So I would want to ask everybody to ponder, think about the gift that God has given you and don't despise your own gifting. Don't despise your talent because God gave you that to be a blessing to somebody else. And when you give that little bit that you have, if you trust God with that, by the time you finish, everybody will walk away blessed. And that's why it's a gift, people. 
<laughs> if God put a gift inside of you, a gift is to be given. Absolutely. Quentin. Bam. <laughs> <laughs> Point to thunder. So I'm, I'm, I think my motto, which has been for years, kind of sums up. My motto is, if I can help someone with a word or a song, then my living shall not be in vain. Hmm. And it goes from the song, um, if I can help someone as I travel along, if I can help somebody with a word or a song, if I can help somebody from doing wrong or bless someone, then my living shall not be in vain. And if we all took that, mm -hmm. um, that personal goal to help just one, each one reach one, then we'll reach everybody. That's it. What are you doing, audience, to reach just one? Mm -hmm. What are you doing to listen, audience? You got three point to pon points to ponder here. Three. So you got a lot to think about. And thinking is good. <laughs> it's good. This platform is also to help transform. And we're to transform our minds to be more and more like Christ each and every day. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Uh, before we end this segment here, can you tell the audience um, the next rehearsal or um, how can they contact you? Now, each of you have different things you do. How, you can give your personal contact um, if, if somebody wants you to come speak or come to inspire others um, and also more information about the event itself. Okay, well, the next rehearsal is actually this coming Saturday. It's in Douglas, Georgia at 10 o'clock. We have like 10 to 12. And then we'll have three rehearsals, three or four rehearsals left, um, April 12th, April 13th, April 19th, and April 26th will be the dress rehearsal before the concert on the 27th. And where's the address for the um, rehearsals? Okay, you would ask me that. Uh, the address. <laughs> it's, not at, it's not at the same event, right? Space. Yes, it's at, it's at the church is called Move of God Deliverance Center. Okay. It's 21 Pinecrest Drive. That's in Douglas, Georgia, 31535. Douglas. And yes, my phone number is 770. Uh -uh, Quentin, give them your email. Oh, okay. <laughs> I I'm trying to protect you. Thank you. Um, my email address is Q, as in Quentin, QDWilliams0721 at gmail.com. Yeah, I got that audience. Yes. Well, you can and maybe one day Quentin will decide that this can be just a community choir and not once a year. But you know, I'm just <laughs> I'm just saying what I'm saying. Hey, you more. I hear you more. Okay. Uh gentlemen, would you like to leave any information or what you do uh that can help others as well? I know um we have Pastor Roche here. He's a, you know, I'm sure he can speak. Yes. Dynamic. Yeah. yeah. Um, yes. Our church is Branded Hearts. So it's Branded Hearts on Facebook, uh, on, on YouTube, uh, Kenny Roche on Facebook, uh, you know, Instagram, all those outlets that that's where I am. And, um, I, I consider it an, an honor to serve. So, um, that that's where I am and that that's how I'm, I'm found if, if anyone's interested. And so, um, excited about, going to Douglas this weekend for rehearsal and the concert and such a pleasure to uh, speak with you, Dr. Marcy. Well, it's a pleasure to have y'all. Mr. Moore. Ah, okay. Um, so my email is uh, Moore, as in my last name, M-O-O-R-E, 281, the number 281-C-O-X at AOL.com. Many people probably don't use AOL anymore, but anyway, uh, so, uh, I don't know how I got to do this out, I, I guess I have to start in the choir, but, uh, do choir workshops. I'll be doing one very soon over in uh, Augusta. I do financial workshops 
and, oh, wonderful. Uh, for churches, organizations, and all that stuff. And I do it for free. And I bring in certified um, financial advisors about retirement and all that kind of stuff. So we do it absolutely free for churches or whatever in just about any state. Uh, so if I'm going to be some, calling on you real soon. If, some, if someone need to, you know, learn how to get out of debt in seven years, learn how to get on a budget, learn how to prepare for retirement, you know, learn how to do just a whole lot of financial things that we as a culture in the past haven't been taught. So when we go and pay all that money to, you know, for uh, uh, um, a Dave Ramsey uh, session or Dr. Gary Kasich, uh, a session, we teach those very same principles. Everything is biblically based yeah. and we do those for free. Like I say, for churches, organizations, individuals, and it costs you absolutely nothing to gain knowledge. So people perish because of a lack of lack knowledge. Of knowledge. And so you get free knowledge and you become better financially. So we do those things as well. So hit me up. I love it. I love it. Now, audience, you got that. I, I will put it so you can see it. They will be able to see uh, how to contact you. And gentlemen, what can I say? Godspeed on this here thing. Yes. Thank so and much. thank you again. And audience, like I say every week, if you would like to be a part of this discussion on the connecting point, reach out to me at drmarcyts at gmail.com, or you can go to the website, Dr. Marcy's Connections, and fill out a form, or join a group on Facebook, the Connecting Point for Creators group. It's just a group of creators of all kind, where we're networking, we're promoting each other, but it's also a means for getting daily inspiration through, you know, to get through this life here because we all need it sometimes. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, reach out, send a request to join through Facebook. We would love to have you. This show airs on Tuesday nights um, on Instagram TV. Well, they're doing something kind of strange, so it might be just the link if you go to Instagram, but click on the link and you'll be directed to YouTube, you can get it on Facebook, Twitter. Um, you also can get it on Wednesday nights at KBCN TV, Spotify, and Anchor. All I ask is that you share it. That's it. We don't we don't ask for any money, none of that. Just share it so that others can be inspired. All right, gentlemen, thank you so much again. And audience, until we get this moment again, peace and blessings. Bye-bye. Right. Thank you. I am here to invite each of you to share your amazing stories with me and the global audience. What does that mean? Well, that means I'm looking for testimonies of the goodness of God and what he's done for you that you know will inspire and uplift others and transform lives. If that sounds like you, please reach out to me at Dr. Marcy TS at gmail.com or you may go to the website Dr. Marcy's Connections and fill out a form. Simple. Simple as that. Let's go ahead and share our testimonies with the world because this is the year of the testimony. I'm looking for you. Go ahead now. Let's connect.